just read it. Uh, in this, uh, what we like to do is spend a few minutes talking about current books and talking about uh, whether we like them or not, whether we recommend you read them or not. Uh, we're coming to you from the Laura Hurst Village uh, Retirement Center in Portland, Oregon. They've been kind enough to donate a space for the program. Uh, and I have with me my co-host, Caroline Miller. Uh, she writes gothic novels and she also has a fabulous blog and recommend both of thank those. You, thank you. <laughs> and um, she's my co-host. And then also uh, with us is P. Anna Johnson and she's here as a guest. And uh, Anna has written a book called Australia Years, The Life of a Nuclear Migrant. And it takes place, it's a, her story of uh, migrating to Australia just before the Cuban Missile Crisis, sort of when things were pretty darn tense around the world. And uh, the book that we're gonna be talking about is called uh, We Need New Names. And it's uh, written uh, by a, a woman, um, an African woman from Zimbabwe. And she, uh, and basically that's what we're gonna be reviewing. So Anna, you wanna start with that? Yes. Oh, and her, her name is, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, No Violet Bulwayo. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Caroline's a specialist because she actually lived in Zimbabwe. So. Zimbabwe is, uh, Bulawayo is the second largest city and it means the place of slaughter. Peak. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> okay. So, um, I enjoyed reading this book a great deal. And uh, it took me to a place, Zimbabwe, I've never been to. And a time in the 1980s and there was great political unrest there which I would not care to be a part of. And uh, all of this turmoil and political unrest is seen through the eyes of 10-year-old children. Uh, it's the story of a young girl uh, named Precious. A darling. I'm sorry, darling. <laughs> That's strange. I know another girl named Precious. <laughs> a darling. And um, there are other children with unusual names, um, Born Free, Cheapo, and Bastard. And uh, these children um, are just trying to survive. Their lives have been very, very disrupted and are in turmoil. But men have been uh, sent off to fight and uh, sometimes come back in terrible, terrible conditions. So they've seen a lot of things that we don't want children or anybody to experience. But their delight in life and their games and their play is so refreshing and it just goes to show how children can cope in really very difficult situations. So. Um, and yet her life doesn't get better when she comes to America, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, she has, and all the children have, a very glamorous picture of what life in America will be like, which I happens is not unusual. So her circumstances uh, enable her to, you can say, escape the situation and come to the United States. And she goes to live with an aunt in Detroit. Uh, where she's amazed by this thing that falls out of the sky called snow, which keeps her inside <laughs> so she can't go out and play. Mm -hmm. And um, her, her life in the United States is not um, the joyous, glamorous picture that she had expected. And um, I think this theme of you need new names runs through the book because as children, they make up games and play. They play their doctors and nurses, and so they give themselves names in those situations. And then in the United States, her name Precious Proust is an unusual, somewhat difficult name for her, but she keeps it. And you see, I think it's never direct, directly um, addresses that uh, reason for new names, but that theme runs throughout it. That the situation keeps changing and uh, 
you need new a new name to cope with a new situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Caroline. Well, the book is marginal to me, and one of the reasons is I liked the idea that it is seen through a child's eyes, but as in To Kill a Mockingbird, you need an adult interpreter to let the reader know what's going on. She never really, as the child, understands what the turmoil is in her country. And, and so that never really comes together. So the book is basically an and, and, and structure. It's like a diary. This happened today, this happened today. Without an overwhelming um, motivation, something that drives the story. So I thought there were moments of rare beauty in the book beautiful innocence, but uh, like when they, one of the children is pregnant by her grandfather and they try to beat the child mm -hmm. out. Uh, uh, the rape of a woman in the church by the African priest and the child's confusion there. The lovely scene in America where the girls cope by going to department stores and dressing up in fashions that they would never. There, there are some moments of childhood that are absolutely beautiful. Her writing is beautiful, but I don't think the book had cohesion. I, I'm with Anna in that I liked, uh, I especially liked the Zimbabwe part. Um, I think, I think you probably, I hadn't thought about the origin of the title, but I think that makes sense what you said. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's about, I mean, she's almost an immigrant within her country because she went from having a house, a television, and all these kinds of things to living in a hut because of the political turmoil. And then she comes to the United States and, and is disappointed. Um, for me, the book falls down when she gets to the United States. Um, one of the reviewers, I, I, I cheated and looked at what other people <laughs> were saying. <laughs> and one of them said she's kind of bratty. She kind of comes off as a bratty person. And I, I just didn't really, I liked the first half of the book, didn't like the second half. Um, she was very hypercritical of everything in the United States. And it didn't fit with what I know of immigrants, you know, including African immigrants that I've been fortunate enough to get to know. And, and that is that they tend to be sort of the brave, the optimistic, the, you know, there's, there's hope, they have hope, mm -hmm. especially when they come from, from bad places. And there was none of that with her. And, you know, I kind of feel like maybe the author hadn't, she's in college, I think she's relatively young, um, she has a great writing future ahead of her, she no question a, about it. a very it. talented writer. Her images were wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And the she's, dialogue. I thought the dialogue yes, was very yes. beautiful. Yeah. She's a gal who has promise, but if you have time to read another book, this would not be a first choice. I think we're running yeah. out of time. And she, I think she needs to, um, I mean, I, I feel like she hasn't kind of resolved her initial reaction to the United States. Now, I may be projecting on No, that. I got it, too. There's a smugness there that kind mm -hmm. of irritated me, but then that's just me. Yeah, I, I, there was a, a, a cruelty to what she had to say about people in the United States that yeah. I thought was undeserved. Yeah. And, um, and, I, and again, that is just not what I have seen from immigrants. They, but, just, they uh, don't strike me that I way. I want to go back to my point. She needed a central issue to move the book, like To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, I forgot the little gal's name, but she had a father who interpreted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there was nothing here to interpret what the child saw. So we just got the child's image, but I'm afraid what? we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, you know, just to sort of finish off on that, I, I think that the one thing that she did well is show how it feels to be basically a foreigner in your own land, a foreigner in a That's new land, a good point. and, and the, and the disjointed uh, feeling you have and how you are not connected. And uh, so I thought that was... Yes, uh, yes, I will give that. you that. Full points on that. Okay. Yeah. So now what we do is we recommend whether or not you should read it. And if we drop a red marble in, it means read it. If we drop a blue one in, it means don't, you know, we don't recommend reading it. And Anna, you get to go first. Okay. Okay. 
And I'm going to say no. I'm with my colleague on this one. As I say, I think she's got a promise and a future, but it's not quite there yet for me. And thank you.